Good morning. Uh, it's a little early. Um, better make some coffee and get started my day. Uh, little thoughts on my video yesterday. I definitely work on my, my spiel when I'm uh, talking about the kit. I have it down pat when I'm doing an actual kit tour with a group. Uh, very, very uh, uh, concise. Uh, one thing leads to another. Uh, editing what I, was, what I was saying last night was very, very rambly. I apologize about that. I'll try to be a little more uh, on point today when talking electronics um, and uh, give you guys a little more detail on how things work. Uh, other thing for this morning, I have no idea the hell my GoPro is. Uh, I don't know if I left it my like I don't think I left my car, um, but I literally haven't seen it in about 36 hours. I don't know where I put it. My house isn't that big. I know I had it out at one point because I was filming it in the rain, and I don't know where the hell it is. So uh, hopefully it shows up today because that's a a bummer of a thing to lose. All right, uh, found my GoPro. It was a uh, under a stack of freshly folded laundry. All right, so I'm gonna try to make this a little less rambly than yesterday. Um, and uh, finish up my little kit tour. So, one of the things I uh, forgot to show you guys yesterday when go looking over the hardware side of things was uh, Rick's foot triggers, foot pedals. Um, so I did a little bit of filming that today, and basically, as you can see, we have a uh, looks like a kick drum pedal without the upright section, which is basically what it is. Uh, these were made by Access, custom made for Rick several years ago, uh, long before I came along. So they're probably maybe ten. 10 years old, maybe a little bit older. Um, but essentially, it's the, the base plate with the uh, the foot uh, foot plate on there and a hinge. Um, instead of using springs, uh, we actually have neoprene foam stacked up. Uh, the reason being is it's uh, with neoprene, it doesn't bounce as much. So with a, a spring, when you know, because, because Rick is playing these by stomping on them, as opposed to like laying his foot on it, uh, so as you lift his foot up with a spring, there's a chance that the top, the beater section would come up and then smack the, the trigger again, whereas neoprene just kind of pops up and stays there. Um, for the actual striking element, uh, we have a, uh, a little Teflon uh, nub that's basically screwed on the end of the pedal, um, and then that strikes the actual trigger housing. So the trigger housing is just a, basically a metal box with a trigger mounted on the inside of it connected to a quarter inch jack. It's the same triggers we have uh, especially on the rest of the kit, the same ones are mounted inside the hi-hats, same ones are mounted the pads, um, and they basically all have about the same uh, gain output and same ratio of, uh, of high to low, uh, same, I guess, same attack ratio. Um, but that's basically it, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, oh, the other thing is, uh, the, well, these are fairly low tech, as you can tell. Um, the, the foam pieces on top are actually uh, Dr. Scholl's insoles that are basically cut out the right size and then gaff taped on. No, there's nothing fancy there. It's just what works. Rick's used to it. We just go with it. I could probably make some crazy uh, fancy customized pads, but these work and he likes them and it's just simple. No matter what we have in the kit, whether it's a hi-hat, uh, a pad, a like a trigger bar, or one of the foot triggers, those all get wired into a, a sub snake on stage. Um, the one we have for the C rig is basically a radial sub snake. Um, the A and B rigs are a little more modular and they're whirlwind. Um, but from there, uh, runs down to my rack where I operate all the uh, the back half electronics, and that gets patched in. Uh, the C rig what we use is uh, Mo 24 IO converters. Um, the A and B rigs actually use uh, 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 older M Audio Delta 1010s, believe it or not. Um, on the uh, the converters, basically go right to the, a pair of laptops. Um, I have one out in the videos uh, just for, for working on it. The other one's still in the box. Um, but we have two of those for redundancy. Um, we also have two switching systems in the rack. So there's an input switching and an output switching. Um, on this particular rack, there is a pair of uh, US Audio uh, AB8s that handle the input side of things. So it's a, uh, I can switch between the two computers on the input side. I also have a, um, a radial uh, output switcher to handle the, uh, the outputs of the computers. Um, 
On my other rigs, I'm using all US audio uh, boxes because I actually have uh, custom panels to have for the, the patch points. Uh, because this rack is so small, we decided to go with a radial unit just because it has switching and outputs all in one, nice and clean. Um, this rack, I also have all the patch points in the front, which is a little odd, but it allows me to get access to the back of the rack in case I need to dive in and do some routing on the converters themselves. If I moved the uh, inputs and outputs in the back of the rack, it would make things much more complicated if I had to do a, any kind of routing on the fly, which I've had to do before. Um, Aside from that, the only other things really in, the, in that rack are a pair of uh, headphone amps. Uh, we use Grace M902s, uh, basically studio quality reference headphone amplifiers. Um, super, super quiet. And with a digital control, they're very, very accurate. I always know exactly what gain set it to every day. We have digital uh, monitor desk, so it's the same level for Rick every day, day in, day out. He has amazing hearing, so if I change anything, he knows. So it's uh, really great to have those boxes. Um, above that, at the very top, which you can't see the rack, is the uh, expansion chassis for the Motus. Um, as the Motu 24 IOs use PCIe cards, or PCI cards, depending on your configuration, um, we have those in an expansion chassis, which are routed uh, via P uh, express card slots to the laptops. Um, at the time we built these things, there, uh, there weren't any laptops that would uh, run um, enough channels or fast enough to run on, on PC. Um, Rick's rig runs at about 2.1 milliseconds latency all round trip, um, and it's a PC-based system. If we were running Mac, not a problem. We can, you know, you can run a Thunderbolt, yeah, whatever you want to do. But at the time, that was the, the fastest option we had, which is why we're using that. Um, the other two items which are not in the rack right now are a uh, uh, Furman power conditioner. I believe it's the ARG. I, uh, I should probably know this. Uh, basically, we have a, a universal input power uh, power box in the rack uh, that I can take power anywhere in the world and it outputs at uh, 60 hertz, 120. Um, great box, really, really handy for us. So no matter where we are, we have a bunch of adapters we travel with. I plug a cable in, no matter where I'm at, I got good power, and then we have a battery uh, uh, US, uh, UPS as well. Um, those are currently pulled to the rack because I'm taking this rack to Rick's house, and all set loaded up, that thing's about 450 pounds, um, and as I need to put that in the back of the car, I can't lift that, so I'm pulling those out. He also has uh, clean power in his studio, and obviously doesn't need the rack. Uh, moving on to the software, um, essentially, look, this is, is D-Trig, the software we use. Um, what you're looking at is the uh, the input side of things. Um, I don't really, we, the, the software sampling side is hidden in the background. I don't really mess with it in a show. We only work on that when we're programming the initial you know, tour and then I leave it. My, my work environment is what you're seeing here. Uh, on the left side is all the individual patches, which are all the songs. Um, I use a pedal board uh, to change uh, which songs we pick for, you know, as, as the set goes. And that will change the MIDI assign uh, note assigns at the bottom, and then also it changes the software sampling in the background. Uh, the trigger sam uh, assignments um, gain settings stay the same. Those are actually universal for the kit. So across the top, uh, what looks like almost like meter bridge stuff, that's actually the, the trigger inputs. Um, when we're programming a new kit, the first thing we start to do is you get your gain set. And you want to get, so when you smack the trigger at maximum volume, you're getting a maximum hit. And then we move over and we open up a scope. Now the scope will allow me to see the uh, trigger time or scan time, depending on your, your software you're using, um, the decay, the masking, and what I'll do is I'll go through and adjust those to get the trigger to respond correctly. From my experience with this software, if I have um, basically a complete uh, waveform from uh, either positive, all the way positive spike to all the way negative spike. Clip the trigger there, that seemed to work uh, the best. And then um, I will set the masking to ignore uh, subsequent hits and then decay to basically get rid of you know, the decay. Once the trigger goes on to zero, we can start again. Um, that's basically it with the trigger setup. Uh, aside from that, we have uh, the ability to add some compression, put in some curves on there. 
Yeah, but that's that's essentially how how GTA works. It's a, it's a pretty straightforward system. Uh, the only thing we have really um, on the top half of that is the uh, uh, crosstalk matrix, which will allow you to uh, dial out any uh, well crosstalk. So if I hit one pad, another pad doesn't go off an accident. Um, this is a little more useful with my acoustic instruments, like the hi hats. Um, because those really want to set each other off, so I, those ones are actually fairly dialed in. The hi hats themselves are actually kind of a pain in the ass, trigger wise, um, in that their settings don't really correspond to anything else. It's kind of a little more voodoo. Um, I didn't you know, do any recording of the actual uh, tr uh, scopes of the hi hats, but it looks nothing like any of their inputs. But they just work, so I just kind of leave them as they, as they are. Um, what else? I think that's, yeah, that's about it with the software. Um, on the sampling side of things, we run battery. As you can see, uh, we open up, we have uh, every song has its own battery cells. Uh, I believe I recorded Rocket here. And what you have is a couple different kick drums, a couple different snare drums. We have a rack, we have a floor a sound, a snare. We also have a, a, a sample. We have a cowbell sample, and we have the loop samples. Um, the kick drums are generally made up of, of several uh, several samples per per output, as are the snares. Um, even though we're using two kicks and two snares on the output side of things, uh, our front house guy really only uses one of each. A lot of the sounds are are set up for either for him or for monitor rolls. So sometimes um, I've made the comment before, uh, in probably numerous videos that kick kind of sounds bad to me, and that's because the sounds we're using on stage for the in-ears are not the sounds you're going to front of house. It's more for a cue sound. So the kick drum sound that I listen to all night long and the snare sound I listen to all night long isn't what the crowd's hearing. It's more for what sounds good coming through the wedges on deck for Sav or what sounds good for Rick on stage. It's not necessarily what sounds good in the mix of front of house, which is why we have multiple channels. So we can actually give the house guy what he needs, uh, to, you know, he needs for mixing purposes up front and we have what Rick needs to hear and cut through the mix on stage. Um, it's kind of like similar with with acoustic miking. Typically, kick drums you have a lot of different mics. Well, we just have different outputs for different purposes. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that's really kind of about it. It's a pretty pretty straightforward thing. It's it's probably a little more voodoo than than uh, or less voodoo than people think. Uh, really, the biggest part of it is just being able to get the trigger set up. Um, the, the one of the, the benefits of doing a software setup as opposed to a, a pure hardware setup like a drum module is that as a tech I'm allowed to work on things during the show uh, if we were dealing with like a, a Roland uh, drum pad or, or a drum brain or a Yamaha drum brain and a trigger went haywire uh, was double triggering or um, you know maybe maybe it started dying so I had to crank the gain there's really no way for me to go in and edit a particular trigger while Rick's playing. And typically, with you know, my experience with the modules, they may have changed in the last couple of years because I haven't I've really messed with them in a couple of years. But typically, when you call up the settings for a pad, the minute you hit another pad, that page changes over to the current pad that you know that was just played, which with Rick is all of them. So if a trigger goes bad, I can't just tweak something and go, hey, I need to turn this off for a second or adjust this trigger. Um, and I do ride quite a bit of levels in the show. If I see a trigger going down or if I hear a double hit and I know Rick didn't double hit it, I will go through, maybe bring the gain, or the, the threshold up a little bit adjust, or adjust the gate um, so it doesn't happen again. Or sometimes I'll just start bumping the gain. If I see a trigger going bad and I know I can't swap you know, that particular element out during that, you know, middle of a song. Uh, like if a snare pad's going out, I can't swap that while he's playing it. I can swap between songs, but I can't swap while he's playing it. So what I can do is I can start bringing the gain higher and higher and higher to compensate the fact that the trigger's going out. And then next song, swap it out, bring, you know, bring the gain back down. Um, or if a trigger just goes complete ape shit, I can, I can mute the input side of the, of the rig so the trigger doesn't go off. Um, and that's happened before. I've had I've had triggers go where it wants just wants to go for whatever reason. It's it's on its last leg and it just wants to you know set off pulse after pulse after pulse. Um, and depending on what you know that's assigned to, that could be a really big huge problem. If that's assigned to a loop you know pad or loop sample, that can make the mix go completely haywire. 
Uh, and the last thing I want to do is, is have you know have problems with the crowd notices. I've had a few of those over the years, but they've been thankfully few and far in between. Um, so that's just you know. Anyways, that's <laughs> a long day. Sorry, um, but that, yeah, that's basically the benefit of running with a software system. Um, I haven't seen any other really programs that run like this. Uh, I did run across one last spring, and sadly, I did not save it uh, in my search on my computer because it was a Mac version, and I would have loved to try it out because uh, the one of the drags of this particular software is PC only. And um, it's a kind of a pain to move on to move it to another computer. I would love to, be able to have a Mac version that I could just you know what new computer load it on done good. Um, you know these computers have been out the the main A and B rig computers are come up about six years old for you know for a PC that's been bounced around the world in racks. It's a long long time. Uh, the laptop rig we got this one in 2014 I believe 2000, 2014. I think it was, or maybe 2013. So wherever, you, wherever you did Vegas is when we built this rig. Um, and it works fine, not a problem, but they are getting a little long in the tooth, so I'm always on the lookout for what's next. Uh, what else? Um, I think that's about it. This video is going to be pretty long. I have to go dump this in and then add all the clips so we can get this thing done and upload it tonight. Um, if you guys have any questions, I know I went really, really fast this night. Um, but if you have any questions, please message me, put in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Um, there will be more of these things as we go along. Um, I'm going to try probably go into maybe uh, as a tour go, get started later this year. I'll probably go into like maybe little small short videos and detailed videos on individual elements. You know, maybe how like a trigger triggers mounted the hi hats, that kind of thing. Um, as opposed to trying to tackle the entire kit at once, or in this case, two pieces. Uh, and I'll show you more about the A-Rig because uh, we'll be using that one, I think, exclusively on this upcoming tour. I haven't heard uh, about using the B or C-Rig yet. So um, the A-Rig will probably get a, little, uh, get a lot more love. Um, and that, that was a little different, a little different than the setup, but essentially software-wise is the same thing. So uh, anyways, I'm going to call this good today, get this edited up, and uh, catch you guys tomorrow.